Right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. So we've got the Nielsen ratings for Agatha all along. It's not looking good for Marvel. It does appear at first glance that Agatha's ratings are basically the lowest out of any Marvel show that they've released on a weekly basis. Uh, and it is in fact even less than the Acolyte. So it's pretty bad from Disney's own sort of metric, right? You've got to remember, um, you know, Disney cancelled the Acolyte because it didn't have, you know, a high viewership. So just using their own internal logic, it's, it's, it's not looking good for Agatha. Uh, I, I would appear they're not really committal on a second season anyway. Most of the Marvel shows have not had a second season. In fact, it's only been Loki that has, hasn't it? So... I guess everything's failed to meet their expectations. Uh, but I thought we'd take a look at it because, you know, the figures aren't great. But apparently the people that have been watching it have found it okay. There is a definite strong contingent of Agatha fans on Twitter. Uh, but it doesn't look like there's many of them, again, which is the same problem that the uh, Acolyte had. So let's take a look. Hit subscribe if you're new here, guys. Do turn those bell notifications on. For those that aren't aware, Nielsen is an independent tracker. In fact, they are paid by Disney to do this. Uh, but they are still an independent body that tracks ratings for shows. They don't just do Disney. They're paid and employed by multiple streaming platforms to sort of, you know, to track all of this stuff and generate leaderboards and tally charts, etc. So they get released and they are always out of date, if that makes sense. So they're always behind because they accrue all the data first and then they publish them. So we're only just getting the premiere of Agatha in their ratings now. Anyway, all of that jargon out of the way. Uh, the Nielsen ratings have now been released for the premiere of Marvel's Agatha series and they fall short of the ratings for the Acolyte, which has been cancelled after one season. Agatha also looks to have the lowest ratings of the weekly released MCU shows. So Agatha premiered with the first two episodes on September 18th, and the series sees the return of Catherine Hahn from WandaVision and follows the infamous Agatha Harkness binding herself down and out of power after a suspicious goth teen helps her break free from a distorted spell. Her interest is piqued when he begs her to take him on the legendary Witch's Road, a magical gauntlet of trials that, if survived, rewards a witch with what they're missing. So together, Agatha... And this mysterious team pulled together a desperate coven and set off down, down, down the road. And here you have it. Here you have it. Uh, it's not great. It's not great at all. We can see here, again, it, it tells you the number of episodes that they've released, that they're counting overall. Two episodes. And that is 426 million minutes watched. Now, I think what's potentially interesting, actually, is people will be bragging, just as an FYI on the side, that the Rings of Power was doing really, really well. Um, it did 829 million minutes watched. True. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could say that. Yeah, they, they are tracking 14 episodes, though. So that's season one and two. That ain't anything to brag about, especially considering how long those episodes are. Anyway, a little bit further. So, what are the, the Agatha Nielsen ratings? So, the Nielsen ratings reveal that for the week of September 16th to September 22nd, so, you know, six days, the first two episodes of Agatha were watched for 426 minutes, million minutes. Uh, for a comparison, the first two episodes of The Acolyte were watched for 488 million minutes watched. So, you can see it, that's really bad. Like, that's not good. So while whilst Agatha is at the low end of the Disney Plus shows, at least Agatha costs a lot less than the Acolyte, it's known that Agatha is Marvel's cheapest show to date and reportedly only around $40 million, whilst the Acolyte costs well over $200 million. Uh, 231 actually, to be exact. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, if it's around $40 million for Agatha, those things are fine, I guess. Those numbers are nothing massively to shout about, though, still. So, we'll just scroll through a little bit of this article. Cause it's quite a good one. It says, what about Agatha versus the other Marvel shows on Disney? So, this is the interesting stuff. If we compare Agatha 
to the other shows on Disney Plus, Agatha looks to have either the second or third lowest ratings, beating Echo and possibly She-Hulk. I mean, okay, that's that's pretty crazy. So Marvel released all of the Echo episodes at once, but if you take the average per episode, Echo only comes out at 146. 2 million minutes and Agatha's two episodes average out to 213 million minutes. She Hulk, the first episode didn't make the Nielsen ratings. <laughs> I remember that, that was hilarious. But the week episode two was released saw 390 million minutes and then week three saw 472 million minutes. We can guess fans only watched the one episode released that week, which is better than Agatha. So again, you can see that there, sort of just drip feeding how bad the show is doing. Uh, Ms. Marvel, which is a show that had awful ratings, like awful, 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 awful ratings. Uh, Ms. Marvel beats Agatha with 249 Nielsen ratings for its first episode. I mean, that's that's crazy by comparison. Scroll through. So Agatha watched less than WandaVision, which is hilarious. So in terms of WandaVision, right? Agatha was watched less than One Division, which had its first two episodes watched for 434 million minutes. Uh, and it says here, blah, 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 corrected, blah, 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 blah. Uh, however, week three was watched for 376 million minutes. And week four, 431. The reason One Division seems so low at first is because episodes were released at the end of the week and that Nielsen measured the week. At, well, it's just how they measured it, basically. Um, they were running at a, a weird time. So, Agatha being launched at the start of the week, there's actually more, essentially a bit more sort of time frames to work within. Um, so there you go, I mean, what else do you say? You know, Moon Knight, 418 million minutes watched, episode one was released, I mean, that's crazy. Hawkeye, first two episodes, released in one week, which saw 853 million viewers. It's not, it's not great, again, Loki, four, four, six. Loki season one. 731. I mean, Disney would be kicking themselves with those kind of viewing figures now. And it says here, at least another plus for Agatha is that the head of Marvel TV said Agatha has the most, the best watchable return rate for any Marvel show, meaning the least amount of drop-off per episode. So those bottom-of-the-barrel MCU fans watching the show apparently like it or are still simply watching because of anything Marvel. So there you go. I don't have much else to say, really. It's just not doing great in the ratings. It's pretty bad. And, uh, yeah, it's not doing great. What do you guys think of this? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop it down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Turn those bell notifications on. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now.